Hello there, year six. We are going to continue our science studies. Welcome back to my channel. Now I'm back at, uh, here in the school. Uh, I'm using the LED display again. And we are going to continue our studies concerning the north or northern mountain ranges of Hungary. Uh, north Hungarian mountains is the title. Page 104 and 5 can help you in your textbook. And uh, when we finish, you need to work in your workbook as well. So let's start what we had last time. We actually learned some basic facts that this area, the northern mountain area in Hungary is full of middle mountains. Some of them are volcanic, some of them have quite a lot of sedimentary rocks, especially limestone. Börzsöny, Cserhát, Mátra, Bük, Akterek, Kars and Zentléni mountains. These were the basic parts and here and there in between there are different plateaus and uh, there are some uh, basins as well like the Nograd Basin and the Borsod Basin. Uh, two famous ones plus the Karaj Medves Plateau which is a kind of basalt plateau was mentioned as well. Uh, Madre is full of embassy stone, Bük is typical of limestones and lots of caves and the biggest cave system is right there in Octelec. So these were the basics we learned last time. So you can just always check the names in your book as well. Here is a relief map to show you a bit more details. You can see the tiny basins of the area and the greenish and not too dark parts. The darker shades show you the mountains. So it's a nice relief map to study the parts. So let's see the resources we have there in the northern middle mountain range. We have that Kopa in Matra, uh, near Rechk, that's a smaller town. Uh, to tell you the truth, it's so deep down there that actually uh, for the local economy, it's not good any longer, too expensive to mine it. So otherwise, uh, copper would be important to make different pipes and wires but uh, in Hungary they stopped doing this. Still, you can find the copper there in stones. The other important resource can be seen here. If you look at the color, it's kind of brownish in color. Lignite is the name and brown coal is the other one. Lignite and brown coal are like siblings, but which is the younger one? Lignite is younger. How do we know that it's younger? If you just check it, you can see different remnants, different little parts of plants, like tiny branches and like parts which is like a little twig. So you can really see that a long time ago it was a kind of plant. So these have woody structures and remains of ancient trees can be seen in them. I just wrote it there. And this is a mine. So it's on the surface and the whole area is look like a different planet. It's not like Earth. There are plenty of places like this still in Hungary. Uh, in Europe, if we want to compare Hungary uh, with uh, one of the European countries, there's a country where you can find plenty of special mines like this in Germany, actually. You need to know that it can be useful for your future studies in year seven. Oh, I forgot to tell you that, of course, the title is again North Hungarian Mountains. And as I'm just uh, telling you the facts, you can always stop the video footage and write down the information in your exercise book. Title, date, and then the information listed there. And you can send me that in an email that you completed. Copper in Matra, these lignite and brackle are mined. These have woody structures and remains of ancient trees can be seen in them. Lignite can give us less energy because it's younger than brown coal or black coal. Uh, still, it's important in power stations, thermal power stations, which you can find in Vishonta. If you go on M3 motorway towards the direction of Debrecen, let's say, or if you want to go to Egerbaikon, you can see these giant chimneys from the motorway. So lignite can give us less energy than brown or black coal. There's a power station in Bishota. These are the facts you need to know. Borsod Basin is the most important industrial area in the region. Rock oil and natural gas are used by chemical industry. There's the Borshot Chem Company there. Uh, they make here, for instance, different plastics. And um, there's uh, an important thing to note here that rock oil and natural gas are mostly 
imported, uh, so there's not enough for these special plants and factories there. Uh, I just wanted to highlight one more kind of industry, which is part of food industries. They make uh, the alcoholic drink Borsho di Bia in the region. The name of the small place is Bürch, where you can find, find their factory. Cement and bricks are made in local factories as well. The region is famous for different clay sources, uh, or there's even um, a natural resource if you want to make porcelain near Holohaza and there's this kind of whitish clay there which they can use to make porcelain. And the other important issue is agriculture and famous vineyards can be found there, so viticulture is crucial. There are important wine regions and vineyards here, Eger and Tokai, the Egri Bikavir, it's like the folk name is Bull Blood, it's really red and it's a kind of stronger wine. And Tokai is really famous for the Asu wines. Asu means nothing uh, more than they just leave the little grape berries on the actual vine stock in autumn. In October, they wait for some freezing days and then they start kind of rottening a bit, but it's a kind of noble kind of rottening. So it doesn't make any bad things to the little berries and then they harvest that and they mix it with other types of wines and this also wine can be kind of really sweet it's a dessert wine really so this is probably our most famous uh, wine uh, from the region the climate is very special here because as you can see in the picture there are the southern slopes lots of sunshine for the vine stalks and then there's Bodrog the Antissa the kind of uh, two rivers, the tributary of Tissa and the river, uh, the big river meet here. So lots of sun is reflected back onto the slopes, plus the volcanic stone base is important. They have plenty of good quality soils, soils in the region, so this is really good for the plant. And they can't even copy this elsewhere. They tried to steal some of the special fungi from wine cellars from this region. The special fungi is called, um, or uh, the special fungus, because it's just one type which is them and it's typical, it's called Botrytis cinerea and it makes the wine cellar walls really soft because it reproduces there on the walls. But because the climatic conditions are really special, elsewhere it just dies. So people tried to steal it and take it with them and they wanted to reproduce it elsewhere in France and Slovakia and many other regions. But the climatic conditions are so special that this little fungus die, dies there. So this is why we can have this special wine region here in Hungary in the northeast. What about the big cities? Eger and Miskolc are two regional centers in the region. There are some other uh, bigger uh, towns and cities as well, like Hatvan, or there's Salgó, Tarján in the region as well, or Ózd, Kazincz, Barcika. These were kind of old, old school factory towns. Nowadays they are a bit mm, less important. Eger is also famous for its schools and churches, and um, historical importance as well. Everybody knows the place, really nice inner medieval center, and you can find a big basilica there, and Eger Castle with Dobo Istvan. Uh, the statue here is really famous. Miskolc is another big city. Actually, it was the second biggest city for many years, now it's Debrecen, but still important, it has also a university, tram lines are typical there as well. And Holoku, Tokai, Sáros Patak, some images of the places, and you can even find some parts in the book. Please open it now at page 105, and uh, we are going to read uh, about these towns and cities. Please underline all the geographical names and names of persons to remember well why these cities were important. Holoku, this Palots village, displays the traditional designs of folk architecture. Traditional local costumes are also still alive there. The girls and women are happy to wear them at festivals and on Sundays. 
This was one of the reasons why the village was added to the list of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. In the castle rising above the village, there's a small exhibition of the weapons, pottery, fragments and stone carvings that were uncovered during, during excavation work. So this is the village here and the castle. Beautiful place. Nowadays you can't go there during this coronavirus uh, thing, but after that you could just go and see the place if you haven't. Again is the other one. You could see some images here. It's one of the most popular holiday destinations in Hungary. It is famous for its castle and classical cathedral, which you can find there. Uh, yeah, classic revival. They used these types of things like in Greek buildings in ancient Greece. It is famous for its... Okay, in his novel, The Stars of Eger, Giza Gardoni wrote about the heroic defenders of the castle against the Turkish troops. True. This is why the double statue is there. Mishkort is among the biggest towns in Hungary. It was the center of the iron smelting industry. Very important trade routes cross the town and make it a lively market town. Mishkort has a rich cultural heritage. Its highest peak is the 234 meters Avash. There's a swimming complex near Mishkort at Mishkort Stavolca. Its unique cave pools are open all year round. The castle in Diósgyör is the area's most visited site. The castle was built in the 12th century and served as the Queen's provincial residence. The Palace Hotel, which rises above Lake Hamri in Lilafüred, which is right next to Mishkort actually, was built in the style of a romantic hunting lodge from the time of the reign of King Matthias Corvinus. The 20 meter high waterfall adds to the picturesque landscape of Lilafüred. Prehistoric remains were found in the Saleta cave. Okay, Sáros Patak is the next one. You can see a picture of the town there. It's a very old and small student town on the banks of the river Bodrum. Its Calvinist boarding school, which was established in the 16th century, played an important role in the cultural history of the town. Rákóczi Castle is one of the most important Gothic and Renaissance buildings in Hungary. Tokaj stands under the great hill where the Tisza and Bodrog rivers meet. So you can check the, some of the Tisza slope, uh, Tokaj slopes there, right at the river Tisza and Bodrog. The famous Tokaj also has left its mark on the town. Wine cellars, restaurants and guest houses offer excellent cuisine as well as excellent wines. On the banks of the river Tisza, there are plenty of opportunities for boating, fishing or camping. Now that we just finished these parts, you can have a quick look at the task on page 102 because Eger and Mishkots are symbolized here. Eger is a bit closer to Budapest, so this one is on, in the west and the other one, Mishkots, is further away, uh, closer to the Ukrainian border. Okay, so Eger, Mishkots. And then hopefully you can remember lots of details now about the towns and cities we just read about and you could just group uh, these statements right under the headings. When you completed that, um, of course you can use the book and your uh, map key in the atlas and you can start working on page 101. Please send me the completed tasks uh, alongside with your exercise book with the information written based on the PowerPoint presentation. And we are going to meet again later on in one of our Zoom sessions until then, bye-bye.